Hello everybody, today I will discuss the remaining part of the uh, solidification process associated with the different casting techniques. Now before doing that, we have some basic understanding of the uh, convective mode of the heat transfer, already we have discussed the convective mode of the heat transfer, but we should know how to find out the, how to correlate the or heat transfer coefficient with the other parameters. So, here that is the focus on this uh, particular uh, today's uh, lecture. So, here we, we have already discussed that convective mode of the heat transfer we know that uh, Q equal to H A and then uh, some temperature differences so T 0 minus T infinity something like that. So, it depends on the convective mode of the heat transfer over the surface and the fluid medium over the surface the velocity of the velocity pattern geometric shape uh, all, all actually decide the heat transfer coefficient. Actually, this heat transfer coefficient is not like straightforward. The value we can get the heat, uh, the value of the heat con that uh, thermal conductivity K. So, if we compare this K is the straightforward we can get the in the kind of the material properties and sometimes we define the temperature dependent material properties we can directly find out. But H is the heat transfer coefficient is not like that. So, it depends on the so many parameters that I will try to understand uh, in this case try to explain that how to evaluate the values of the H uh, uh, in the in the in this uh, in in when the convective mode of the heat transfer is there. So, before doing that we note no we should uh, note that there are the so many non dimensional parameters usually we look into one is the nacelle number H L by K we, is, we can see the nacelle number H is the heat transfer coefficient. L is the characteristic length of the particular geometry when it is interacting the fluid interacting with some uh, um, solidified component metal metallic component and then Reynolds, K is the thermal conductivity of this particular material and then Reynolds number also is we can see that this characteristic length the velocity of the liquid or velocity of the fluid density as well as the viscosity of the fluid medium. So, this defines the Reynolds number and of course, all are non-dimensional uh, parameter and Pendel numbers also mu viscosity specific heat and K mu Cp by K uh, ratio it, it indicates the uh, Pendel number. Actually, all these non-dimensional parameters having some uh, significance to understand the, the, the flow of the material uh, or I think flow of the fluid medium uh, over, over the uh, solidified surface. But in this particular case our interest is to know look into the what can be the value of the H we can calculate the heat transfer coefficient. So, by correlating with other parameters or by correlating with other non dimensional parameters that is the usual procedure or practice to find out the H value heat transfer coefficient value in practical application of the uh, different cases. So, in this case our analysis is restricted to the solidification or during of the when of the metallic material. Now, just an example here the for laminar flow parallel to the surface of a plate. So, if the flow is the laminar condition then heat transfer coefficient uh, we can relate the heat transfer coefficient in terms of the other non dimensional parameters. For example, Nacelle number is related to the Reynolds number and Prandtl number and you can see these are the different uh, parameter constant terms is the Reynolds number the REL to the power half Pendel number that is to the power 1 by 3 and this is the constant sum. So, this is one particular when you are looking into the laminar flow uh, parallel to the surface plate in that case the nacelle number is this one. Now, from here if we calculate the, the flow conditions in terms of the Pendel number and the Reynolds number then from there we can find out the value of the H here because here you can see that uh, nacelle number equal to H L by K, L is a characteristic dimension characteristic length and K is the thermal conductivity of the fluid medium. So, therefore, from there if you calculate the nacelle number and from nacelle number in terms of the if you know the Reynolds number and Pendel number from there and then nas from nacelle number we can calculate the what is the values of the value of the heat transfer coefficient H. Now, here you see that K rho mu and Cp all the thermal conductivity, density, uh, viscosity and specific heat all are the properties of the fluid that is the that we can see I mean to say that suppose uh, this is the uh, solidified. Uh, so, this is the ladle is there liquid metal is there and over the surface there is a heat transfer. So, from there from the surface heat transfer will be occurs 
partly by convection as well as the radiation radiative mode of the heat transfer. So, therefore, if it is we are assuming the convective mode of the heat transfer from here from the surface, then we need to know what is the value of the H. Now, the surface condition over the fluid when it transferring from the liquid metal uh, converting uh, the transferring the in convective mode of the, the surround the fluid medium. So, the nature of the fluid medium actually decides what can be the value of the H. So, that is usually characterized by in terms of whether it is a laminar flow, whether it is a turbulent flow is there ok and based on that uh, we can we can find the different correlation with the other non dimensional parameters and uh, just this is one example if it is a forced convection forced convection uh, then if forced convection means suppose the uh, some external uh, energy is applied such that flow of the it is a is the, the, the heat flow is not actually convective mode of the heat flow is not natural. So, therefore, some forced convection is uh, assuming uh, with, the, with the some external aid in that case this relation is valid uh, in this particular case. So, like that similar way we, if it is a natural convection also then we can find out some other non dimensional parameters and that or that non particular non dimensional parameter is basically uh, characterize the natural convection and, and then we can utilize this, uh, this parameter in terms of the other non dimensional parameter and finally, always we try to target to find out what is the values of the Nusselt number and from the Nusselt number we exactly calculate what is the value of the heat transfer coefficient. So, here seen uh, here uh, we can see that that sometimes we define the T f the film temperature T f equal to T 0 plus T infinity by 2 T 0 is the surface temperature. So, suppose here the surface temperature equal to T 0 and T infinity the free stream temperature of the fluid. So, this temperature free stream velocity of the fluid. So, uh, the average temperature uh, can be considered as a film temperature and based on that we can do the further calculation because uh, if it is a temperature dependent it is uh, then it is also has to be decided which temperature we should consider the property whether it should be T 0 or whether it should be T infinity or it is better to take the properties at exactly the temperature average temperature of that T 0 plus T infinity by 2. So, that is why we take some intermediate temperature T f that is the average of the T infinity and T 0 surface temperature of that of, of this particular component and this value we try to find out utilize this temperature for further calculation of uh, or, or estimation of the H value. Now, uh, just an example that equation is valid in this case of Nusselt number is valid if the Prandtl number is in this ratio. So, that means this equation is valid the Prandtl number is between 0.6 to 50 within that range if Prandtl number is there then this equation is also valid. Even laminar flow is valid so that Reynolds number when you are considering the laminar flow so that in that case Reynolds number should be less than 10 to the power 6 and uh, these are the so that means there is some restriction of using this particular equation and of course within the certain range of the Prandtl number and Reynolds number this particular equation is valid. Similarly, uh, if we understand the liquid metal, liquid metal is usually in this case the liquid metal is a very low Prandtl number is usually low uh, in this case because viscosity value is uh, in this case thermal conductivity is actually very high. So, in the, uh, the liquid metal is usually associated with the low Prandtl number, but heavy oil it is associated with the high Prandtl number it actually depends on the what is the values of the viscosity and mainly the thermal conductivity of this particular material and best and that actually mainly decides the value of the, the Prandtl number. So, uh, this Prandtl number low Prandtl number we are handling the in this particular case the, the low values of the Prandtl number basically liquid metal. Now, we, we can see further other calculation other relation also for example, if there is a turbulent flow if there is a turbulent flow we can get this relation the Nusselt number is a function of the Reynolds number and Prandtl number. So, it basically function of the Reynolds number and Prandtl number here, but the correlate uh, correlation is like that we can see a very complex equation the, the correlation Reynolds number half of Prandtl number to the power 1 by 3 some constant term is there log logarithm of REL to the power 2.584 3300 So, you can see this is a uh, complex number. So, we can we very complex equation we can find out. Uh, for the turbulent flow and this is the expression for the Nusselt number. It is also having some restriction because in this case when you are considering tur uh, turbulent flow. So, this equation is valid if Reynolds number is greater than 10 to the power 7. 
and we can utilize if the that situation arises that uh, over the surface the solidified component over the surface the fluid velocity is such that it is a, if it is following that argument flow then we should use this particular equation or correlation to find out the Nacelle number which is explicitly we can see it is a function of the Reynolds number as well as the Prandtl number. So, we can take the another case that is the heat transfer coefficient of the free convection. So, we do not there is no need of some kind of the natural convection is there uh, and free convection no external add is uh, there. So, in that case if it is a free convection mode of the heat transfer in that case we can use this relation Nacelle number is a function of the uh, also Grassoff number and Prandtl number where C and M are constant term here. So, here we can see the Nacelle number is the Grassoff number and Prandtl number for na, uh, free convection, but if it is a force convection or turbulent flow uh, we if you observe in that case Nacelle number is a function of the Reynolds number and Prandtl number. So, these are the two uh, differences are there. Now, uh, if we understand that uh, we see that C and uh, but how to find out the C and M value depends on standard tabulated values are available. We can choose depending upon the other parameters the range of the other parameters we can choose the values of the C and M value and we can get the correlation. Now, in this case uh, already mentioned that uh, there is a characteristic length for horizontal cylinder uh, we can see the characteristic length is L equal to D. So, the characteristic length is equivalent to the diameter when you try to understand uh, this thing um, that uh, heat transfer. So, length dimension is equivalent to the uh, diameter uh, the characteristic length. Now, the strength of the free convection is basically decided by the uh, Grassoff number. So, Grassoff number is the is expressed like that the G uh, acceleration due to gravity beta is the volume expansion coefficient density of this medium and T0 surface temperature T infinity the surrounding fluid medium temperature characteristic is length square and viscosity square. We can see that this is the expression for the uh, Grassoff number. Now, if you know all these parameters then we can easily calculate what is the Grassoff number for a particular uh, uh, during the uh, convective mode of the heat transfer. If you know the Grassoff number and Prandtl number then we can estimate the Nacelle number here also. But if we try to look into the rectangular plate with dimension L1 and L2, so uh, in a rectangular plate the uh, dimension uh, L1 and L2 in this case how to calculate the uh, characteristic length. In characteristic length is basically L1 the square root of L1 and L2. So, these are the way to calculate the characteristic length and other things the volume expansion coefficient uh, coefficient of expansion in that case beta is usually calculated is equivalent to the 1 by T. So, 1 by uh, temperature that actually indicates the uh, volume expansion coefficient associated with the convective mode of heat transfer in case of the uh, free convection. So, free convection uh, heat transfer in case of the free convection. So, it is understood that that uh, uh, in overall uh, when you try to understand the convection the target is to uh, estimate what is the values of the H. If you want to calculate the value of the H then we need to calculate what is the values of the Nacelle number that is a non dimensional parameter, but Nacelle number uh, is a function of the uh, Reynolds number or Prandtl number in case of the force convection or in case of the turbulent flow of the um, uh, turbulent flow. So, if we uh, from there we can find out the Nacelle number with the particular correlation we can follow, but if it is a natural or free convection then the Nacelle number is a function of the Grassoff number and Prandtl number. So, uh, this we see we have seen the gas expression of the gas number this is also non dimensional parameter a number. So, therefore, uh, here if we calculate the Grassoff number and if we calculate the Prandtl number and from there we can use the correlation of the we can estimate the Nacelle number, but these values associated with this expression C and M that can be decided upon the looking into the other range of the other non dimensional parameters and from we can select these values from the standard tabulated. Uh, uh, tabulated uh, data. Now, once we understand the convection then we can look into the radiation radiative heat transfer I think the basics of the radiative heat transfer is well known the total amount of the heat is uh, it depends on the in radiative heat transfer in the sigma uh, Stefan Boltzmann constant sigma the cross section area and temperature of the particular surface. So, T to the power 4. So, Q is proportional to that T to the power 4 
and we can estimate this uh, st uh, stephen boltzmann constant is values are available standard values 5.6 meter to the minus 8 watt per meter square k to the power 4. Now, when there is a two surfaces how to estimate the net radius and heat exchange between that surfaces that can be estimated like that q the flux is proportional to the sigma into t 1 to the power 4 minus t to the power 4 here t 1 and t 2 the, the temperature of the two different surfaces and net radiative heat exchange between these two surfaces is proportional to that. Now, total radiative heat transfer can be like that we can introduce these two things here one is the f is the kind of shape factor here and A is the uh, surface area and this temperature T1 minus T2 to the power 4 and sigma Stephen Boltzmann constants. But AF shape is a actually function of the emissivity for this particular surface and it depends on the geometry of the uh, two surfaces. So, based on that different values of the AF can be introduced here and we can estimate total heat transfer radiative heat transfer between the uh, two surfaces. So, we can use this this is the in terms of the flux and this is the total heat transfer in terms of the this uh, f the um, the factor shape factor sigma stephen boltzmann constant and total cross section area here so we take one reference cross section area and, and based on that we can manipulate the values of the shape factor and that actually decides the total uh, heat transfer but overall we can see that radiative heat transfer is actually depends on the the fourth power of the temperature so that's why we are getting this expression now, once we understand that from the surface, the uh, this uh, suppose this is the ladle, so liquid metal is there, and this all sides are insulated, usually insulated, so there might not be any heat transfer from the all other surfaces. Whatever heat transfer is there in the top surfaces, but in this case, both convective and radiative heat transfer occurs from the surface. Now, when you try to handle this kind of the problem how to incorporate the both mode of the heat transfer convective and radiative heat transfer from the surface that we can combine these two radiative heat transfer and convective heat transfer and we can, we can utilize uh, uh, we can uh, treat it in different way. So, that effective values of the uh, conductive convective heat transfer and we can we can modify we can introduce some heat transfer coefficient by taking into the values of the the uh, heat transfer coefficient associated with the radiative heat transfer. So, that that can be done and easily and the problem can be handled in that way. So, we, are, we can see that that uh, radiation is closely basically radiation is closely associated with the convection, but we can work in the analysis we can make is the in the uh, in analogy of the convective mode of the heat transfer. So, let us see how it works. So, radiative heat transfer Q radiation q r a d equal to f sigma a t 1 to the power 4 minus t to the power 4 that is the usual expression for that we know. Now, we can further expand this one. So, t 1 to the power 4 minus t, t 2 to the power 4 equal to t 1 square minus t 2 square into t 1 square plus t 2 square. Now, further t 1 square minus t 2 square we can further expand it. So, t 1 minus t 2 into t 1 plus t 2 into t 1 square plus t 2 square. Now, we can introduce in such a way that this temperature factor into the other factor f into sigma that can be considered as h r the area cross section area into t 1 minus t 2. So, h r is effectively the expression is that it depends on the f sigma t 1 square plus t 2 square into t 1 plus t 2. So, mathematically if we express like that h r is the radiative heat transfer coefficient then we can we can uh, add uh, in the convective mode of the heat transfer mode uh, and the by estimating the different values of the heat transfer coefficient in these cases now we can it is very obvious that if you if you do this separate in this way the this uh, calculation that h is the but you can see that it's a temperature value the but we can say the radiation coefficient is just strongly dependent on the uh, or uh, on temperature that means it is a strong function of the temperature that is very obvious with the expression of the H R radiative heat transfer coefficient. Now, now combining these two convection and radiation we can see the what is the heat loss by considering the both convective and uh, radi uh, radiative heat transfer mode then we can see that Q T can be represents total the, the heat transfer coefficient H convective it is the radiative heat transfer coefficient A is the area and the temperature difference uh, the surface temperature and the this medium temp uh, that uh, fluid surrounding fluid medium temperature here T 2 is equivalent to T infinity. So, that means the uh, 
the, from the surface T0 the radiative heat transfer occurs is the with the surrounding media T infinity. So, that is why you put the T0 minus T infinity here. So, we can see that this is the more effective way to incorporate the both convective and radiative heat transfer loss from the surface. Now, we can utilize and in other way also now we try to understand the uh, solidification of the pure metal in the dip in the perspective of the heat transfer uh, total heat transfer and we can see and how to incorporate the H and HR effect in this particular case and uh, how to analyze the total uh, the solidification time uh, in, 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 in case of the pure metal. Now, uh, we, we can assume the heat to be removed from the pure metal. So, Q dot m equal to m into h f. So, h f is the latent heat of the fusion and m is the mass uh, of the this thing the I, I think uh, in this case uh, mass of the liquid metal and h f is the latent heat of the uh, fusion. Now, heat loss from the top surface. So, heat loss from the top surface I, I, I can assume that there is a uh, there is a ladle is there and uh, liquid metal is there and the other all parts are insulated. So, whatever heat transfer is occurred from the surface. Now, in this case we can see heat loss from the top surface here Q T total heat loss Q T total heat loss equal to Q dot it is a rate of the heat transfer T into over the time T. So, that is why Q T equal to Q dot when a per unit time rate of the heat transfer into T that integrates total heat transfer. Now, Q T can be it represents also like that uh, this uh, total heat loss from the uh, from the surface equal to H plus H R the convective heat transfer coefficient and radiative heat transfer coefficient into this effective area A T and the the here the melting point temperature uh, to the T infinity because in this case we are considering the solidification is basically the converting from the melting point temperature say pure metal this converting to the phase uh, but at the melting point temperature from liquid phase to solid phase when it is changing the phase liquid phase to solid phase it need to extract the, the latent heat only. So, that is why it is giving the same temp Tm temperature and T infinity temperature Q to total heat loss just to change from liquid phase to solid phase this thing and that is also equivalent to M into H f is the mass and H f is the um, latent heat of fusion. Now, T m is the freezing point of the metal that is very obvious and assume the side wall of the ladder is insulated that we already mentioned here. So, therefore, from this two expression we can see that uh, this Q dot m equal to Q dot T. So, that means one is the heat removed from the metal uh, that we can see just remo re heat removed from the metal just because of the phase transfer from liquid phase to solid phase. So, that is why I have considered the latent heat here m f uh, into T uh, m f here Q dot m equal to m f uh, equal total heat uh, loss of this thing and if it is over the time say over the time total heat transfer we can see that Q T equal to uh, this uh, this uh, this rate of the heat transfer into T actually uh, this here uh, I think we can say that uh, rate of the heat transfer here into into T. So, that equal to M F. So, H plus H R into A T to T M minus T infinity into T equal to M H F. So, we will make this balance uh, in, in, in this case. And uh, we can see that once we make the balance in this case, uh, we, we can uh, T can be calculated this one. Now, if ladle is filled with the superheated liquid, in this case superheated liquid means uh, we are considering the only M H F, M is the only phase change from liquid phase to solid phase, but this phase change occurs at the melting point temperature T M only. But if the superheated liquid means that you need to extract the uh, this uh, uh, specific heat also associated with the superheat. So, that is why the superheat of the molten metal MCP total heat content MCP Tp minus Tm. Tp is the uh, peak temperature or superheated temperature to reach from superheated temperature to uh, melting point temperature. So, what is the heat loss uh, from that is the it is a specific heat content. Then it is changing the same temperature, but change of the phase. So, therefore, we account the latent heat. In that case total uh, rate of the heat transfer equal to Q dot M equal to M C P T P minus T M equal to M H F. Now, uh, 
uh, from there we can find out that heat loss by convection and radiation as the temperature decreases from the TPT TM definitely. So, here from changing temp peak temperature to the melting point temperature in that case both convective and radiative heat transfer will be there and then solidification occurs at TM. So, therefore, QTF can be uh, can be estimated like that H plus HR into T bar uh, at um, the cross section area and T bar minus T infinity. So, T bar is basically we are taking the average temperature uh, Tp plus Tm by 2 because uh, that which which temperature we should consider the values of the heat transfer coefficient. So, that is why we have to take some intermediate temperature when it is change when it change uh, when it is considering from peak temperature to the melting point temperature. So, that is why we take the average value and we take the all the values properties at this average temperature. So, therefore, at average temperature we need to consider the values of the heat transfer coefficient. So, therefore, QTF into T over the time T1 for example and, and then uh, total heat transported over the time T1 just to reach the from peak temperature to the melting point temperature. So, total amount of the heat release MCP Tp minus to the specific heat just to reach without phase change also here. So, we can find out T1 can be MCP Tp minus Tm divided by uh, here QTF equal to H by H at, at average temperature H plus HR that could be defined at the average temperature of peak temperature melting point temperature and cross section area and the temperature difference. Here also we consider temperature difference T average temperature minus T infinity. So, therefore, when this is the time, but here this time required to, to reach from Tp to Tm. Now, second one, second period is the changing of the phase from uh, Tm, but changing of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase. In that case, total heat content, the latent heat has to be released and divided by the H equal to HR at, at the, at, uh, the cross section area and Tm minus T infinity. So, in this case, HR is, is basically defined by the melting point temperature. So, here is the difference is that T1 and counting the T1 time and T2 time, the difference is that here we are counting the define the properties at the average temperature T bar, but in this case we are cal calculating the the uh, the values of the H and the heat transfer coefficient at the temperature Tm. So therefore, total time solidification time here you can count the total T1 plus T2. So in this case, of course, we can calculate from the that we have seen that calculation can be done from directly reaching from the peak temperature to the this uh, melting point temperature. So, we can see that Tp to directly T melting point temperature. So, if we do this calculation from peak temperature to melting point temperature directly in that case, the question is that which temperature we should consider the values of the heat transfer coefficient. So, therefore, if we make the between the Tp and Tm so many divisions time span and that will be the in, the in that cases if uh, each and every point if we calculate the average temperature for the each and every point. So, uh, I mean to say that suppose this is the Tp temperature and suppose this is the melting point temperature to reach how many steps we can you utilize in between and then each and every steps we can calculate the average temperature and each and average temperature we can calculate the heat transfer coefficient then results might be more accurate. So, so reach to say each cases we can find out the T1, T2, T3, the T4 like that T4, T5. So, in that case total solidification can be summation of T1, T2, T3 plus T4 plus T5 like that. So, this is the in this way if we calculate the so many steps in between then accuracy of uh, calculating the values of the heat transfer coefficient will be more. So, therefore, uh, in that is why in this case we are considering the two different steps time one from the peak temperature to the melting point temperature and then phase change from melting point temperature at the melting point temperature. So, in this case we count only two times steps T1 and T2 such that total solidification time we can say that T equal to T1 plus T2. So, this is one approach and this approach is basically we are considering just to estimate the values of the heat transfer coefficient at a particular temperature. Now, if we consider the solidification of the alloy the solidification of the alloy, the enthalpy of the alloy during the solidification is basically H equal to Fs Hs the fraction of the liquid fraction and the solid fraction where Hs and Hl are the enthalpy of the solid and liquid and Fs and Fl are the weight fraction of the solid and the 
uh, liquid phase even H can also be calculated in the specific uh, HL minus FS minus HF total. So, uh, in this cases enthalpy should be considered you know when you are considering the solidification of an alloy system. Now, here uh, we can take an uh, I am not going much details about the solidification of the alloy uh, uh, may be um, may be further advanced course this can be considered. Now, we can take an example for the solidification of the pure metal then to understand the how to implement the different temperature to estimate the heat transfer coefficient and to calculate the more precisely the solidification time for a pure metal. Here we can consider the ladle with the 225 kg of liquid iron initially at 1895 Kelvin that means uh, if we know the melting point temperature sorry uh, this Tm melting point temperature of the iron equal to 1809 Kelvin. So, in that sense 1895 Kelvin is above the melting point temperature it means that this iron is having some superheated temperature 1895 Kelvin. Now, we have to estimate the time required for the liquid iron to lose all its superheat. So, first we calculate what is the total amount of the heat is uh, losing uh, by this uh, liquid iron uh, for the superheat that means just to reach the, uh, the peak temperature to the melting point temperature. This is one time count we can estimate the second one the total time required for it to solidify. So, total time required for it to solidify means we need to count the next phase we need to kind of what is the total phase change from liquid phase to solid phase at melting point temperature and then counting total time T1 plus T2 indicates the total solidification time in this particular case. Assume the exposed area is 0 0.12 meter square. So, exposed area 0 0.12 meter square. So, how to handle this particular problem? We see the other uh, remaining assuming the ladle was a perfect insulation that the ladle wall is a perfect insulation. I mean to say that this all other surfaces is perfect insulation. So, no heat loss from the other surfaces whatever heat is losing on the top surface only. Now, we need to consider the convective mode of the heat transfer and radiative heat transfer from the top surface and cross section area associated for the top surface we need to consider. So, here properties of the air that means outside medium is air uh, and here the T infinity means it is in 300 Kelvin air temperature and of course, we are considering this is the natural convection or free convection is happening in this case and uh, from there we try to estimate the what is the uh, values of the total solidification uh, two different cases. Now, first we find out the, the first case the time required for the liquid iron to lose all its superheat. So, therefore, in this case average temperature we need to consider between the peak temperature and the melting point temperature. So, average temperature equal to here 1852 Kelvin we can see a melting point already mentioned this thing. So, therefore, uh, this is the average temperature and this is the Tm the uh, melting point temperature. So, we can do the other calculation also uh, that uh, this Tf film temperature, film temperature half of this we can say the film temperature of this 1852, 1852 the average temperature of the melting. So, you can take the temperature scale equal to Tp and then Tm. So, average temperature is basically here T bar some in between these two and the it is a it is a T infinity though um, uh, air temperature. So, when you consider this one we can take the average temperature T bar and this is the T infinity of the uh, air temperature. So, we can the film temperature we can calculate taking care of accounting the uh, T infinity also that air temperature between these two we can make another average 1852. So, T bar and uh, this is T infinity uh, average of that 1076 Kelvin okay, this we can calculate. So, T f film temperature because this film temperature is equal to estimate the volume expansion coefficient this thing beta can be estimated like that 1 by T f. So, 1 by T f indicates the volume expansion coefficient that we can estimate. Now, in this case on the top surface and with the cylinder ladle shape is usually cylindrical in shape. So, therefore, characteristic length is equal to the diameter of the uh, cylinder. So, on the diameter of the cylinder is basically it is a the diameter indicates the equivalent uh, this characteristic length in this case. So, L equal to D equal to 0 point because here the cross section area is given. So, pi by 4 into d square is 
0.12 meter square is given. So, from there we can estimate what is the value of the D and that D is equal to, so it will be 0.39 meter. So, here L equal to D equal to 0.39 meter in this particular case that means characteristic length we can calculate. Now, we can estimate the Grassop number here. So, Grassop number is calculated that G, G values we know beta is the there we calculate density is given uh, for uh, this uh, fluid medium density also known T0 uh, here 1852 Kelvin. So, 1852 Kelvin here we can consider the T0 1852 Kelvin. So, uh, uh, in this case all properties of the T uh, all properties of air at Tf this and here we can estimate the T0 uh, the surface temperature and then T infinity. So, here surface temperature we consider this is the actual average value 1852 Kelvin, T infinity 300 Kelvin and characteristic length and the viscosity from there we can this is the value Grassop number and uh, we can we can further calculate Grassop number into Pandel number equal to this one because Pandel number equal to mu Cp by k from here the values of from the properties we can find out the uh, Pandel number mu Cp by k. So, once we get it then we can get the Grassop number into Pandel number equal to this value for example, this is the value. Now, standard tabulated data we can find out the C and the constant terms C equal to 0 0.15 M equal to 1 3 uh, M equal to uh, uh, 1 by 3. So, because we are using this relation the heat transfer coefficient for free convection is represented like that Nusselt number equal to C into Grassop number and Pandel number to the power M. So, C is 0 0.15 M equal to 1 by 3. So, this value we can calculate from the standard table and once we get the Nusselt number uh, because Grassop number and Pandel number we, can, we have already calculated from there we can some numerical value will be getting for the Nusselt number. So, once we get this value the Nusselt number equal to H L by K. So, from here H can be calculated K by L into Nusselt number. So, here this is the way how to calculate the values of the H. So, once we get the H value this is the heat transfer coefficient uh, then radiative heat transfer coefficient can be calculated also like that that uh, this thing emissivity uh, given 0 0.28 and the sigma and uh, T bar square average temperature T the surrounding fluid med medium air temperature divided plus 300 say it is coming like that 120 equal to 0 0.26. So, effective values of the emissivity here the we can calculate the instead of taking the uh, this this uh, F value here basically F we are considering the value uh, F equivalent to here 0 0.28 equivalent to emissivity in this case. So, we are getting this value 120 equal to because we remember the geometric the F value depends on the geometric shape and the emissivity of the surface condition. So, surface condition uh, is characterized by the values of the emissivity from the surface. So, when you are talking about the radiative heat transfer. So, then uh, here with the effective values equal to 0 0.2 F, F equal to this and then from there we can find out this value. Now, average T bar also we calculated, T P also 1895 and T M 1809 all these values are already calculated. So, from there we can estimate what is the solidification time just to reach from T peak temperature to T m temperature. So, here m C p T p minus T f and H plus H r at the values of the average temperature T bar and then here A t equal to the cross section area T bar minus T infinity. So, from here we can easily calculate what is the, the time required to release the the superheat and just to reach the melting point temperature of the uh, in the liquid phase. Now, once we calculate T1 then we need to calculate T2 just to change phase from uh, liquid phase uh, liquid to solid phase. So, T2 can be calculated M H F is the latent heat of fusion change of the phase H plus H R cross section area T M minus T infinity. So, here and T F in this case T M plus 300. So, here the uh, we can uh, uh, we, we can see that T f can be calculated T m plus 300 because uh, this prim uh, because in, in the previous one we can we, what we can calculate the T f value. So, T f calculated as the T f half of uh, 1852, 1852 equal to T bar plus T infinity uh, uh, by average value of that because this is the taking care of the reaching from the superheating and then interacting with the the air medium also, but in this case since we are considering the time required to reach from T m 
and between T infinity. So, therefore, the T f can be the average of this T, T m plus uh, T infinity. So, average values of that we can estimate the T f and from there we can estimate the beta also uh, such that from there we can estimate the again we can estimate the values of the h and uh, as well as the h r also h r also calculated because in this case h r can be uh, that we can replace t bar in terms of the t m here also t bar should be replaced by the t m and remaining other parameters will be same then then we need to calculate what is the value of the h or what is the value of the h r okay h we are calculating the grassop number but in this case grassop number tf is different from the previous one so then calculate h calculate hr because that there might be some um, uh, definitely some differences will be there values of the h and hr as compared to the previous one because in this case the temperature we are considering the temperature values are different in this case so once we get it then again we calculate the nacelle number from the Grassoff number we calculate the nacelle number similar approach you can follow. So, nacelle number from the nacelle number we can use the h, h value and similarly what we calculate the hr value just changing the temperature value in this case we can estimate the hr value and from there uh, we can calculate that tm value and t2 count. So, when you do this t1 and t2 values and then total solidification can be t1 plus t2. So, here we can see that when you try to understand the solidification uh, of the pure metal here we, we can see that always we are targeting the values of the nacelle number but we at the different temperature has to be taken care of this thing which temperature we should consider the data. So, we T1 and T2 is basically segregated these two different time span one is the reaching from the melting point peak temperature to the melting point temperature and other cases T2 has be counted like that just change of the phase of the from melting point uh, melting point temperature just change phase from liquid phase to solid phase and both the cases we can see how to calculate the intermediate temperature or average temperature value to estimate the volume expansion coefficient and to estimate the h and hr so these two cases the difference is that t beta values can be different h and hr if we divide in the different time segment here so, these values are the different when you calculate the time T1 and when you calculate the time T2, the solidification time, both will be the different. So, because temperature span, average temperature are different in these two cases. So, that is the only difference and otherwise approach are the similar in these two cases. So, this is a, an example. Now, we will try to look into the other aspect that of course, in casting analysis, we have already gone through the different uh, riser and there is a need of the riser in the solidification of the casting because purpose of the using riser in a casting system is that riser should be able to provide the uh, that liquid metal when there will be the shrinkage in the cast volume. So, when there is a shrinkage in the cast volume then riser will be the uh, riser will supply the liquid volume to compensate that the shrinkage volume in a in a casting process. So, that is the purpose of utilizing the uh, riser, but in that case riser should solidify after the casting. So, that is the only requirement and we will be able to it means that we will be able to in the liquid phase till the completion till the completion of the solidification uh, for the actual uh, the cast volume. So, that in that sense we can look into that uh, the perspective of the riser design and the cast volume the how the shrinkage we can the shrinkage volume we can take care of this thing and then what we can really uh, we can uh, more realistic calculation we can perform for the solidification time or maybe design of the riser. So, what shall be the dimension of the riser, but including the effect of the solidification shrinkage during in the casting process. So, we know the solidification time depends on the uh, volume by area ratio in general casting large casting process. So, we, we are assume first the solidification time depends on the volume by square of the volume by area ratio. Now, in that case suppose V R f is the final volume of the riser is required in this case since the solidification time and the riser are same in this case. So, it means that if the at least riser should solidified after this thing, but mathematically we can assume that if the solidification time for the casting and riser the same then that it since solidification time for the uh, riser is the solidification for the casting same if this is the case then V by area ratio for the riser should be equal to the V by area ratio for the casting. So, that is the 
from here you can kiss and that we are getting from this expression that the re relation the general for the casting. Now this is equation 1 if we consider. Now final volume of the riser V R F indicates the final volume of the riser. So initial volume of the riser V R and F is the some fraction into V C plus V R because this is the this second right hand side the second part is indicating the total volume loss or shrinkage volume. Uh, during the solidification. So, F indicates the fraction of the feed material. So, we are count the fraction of the feed material and based on that we can estimate what is the total volume of the uh, what is the total shrinkage volume uh, because shrinkage uh, will occurs both in the case of the cast volume uh, as well as the riser volume both the cases we get the shrinkage. So, therefore, we can take care of the shrinkage volume for the V C plus V R and F is the uh, fraction of the uh, feed material. Now, if we consider the equation 1 and 2 from this cases that A R by A C. So, uh, we can see that equation 1 and 2 we consider from equation 1 and 2 then we can get this particular expression A R by A C equal to V R by V C 1 by F minus F equation 3 we are getting. We can a simple manipulation we can do uh, from equation 1 and 2 we can get this equation in terms of the F. F is the fraction of the feed material. Now, we have we understood that uh, this uh, we can if we want to take care of the curvature effect in the during the solidification we define some non dimensional parameter beta in the i think uh, we, we have discussed already in the previous class in the same module so here beta equal to lambda into uh, this 2 by root pi plus 1 by omega into beta omega is the factor here so, and solidification beta is the non dimensional parameter, but here the we can take care of the, the curvature effect here. So, this is the expression for that beta. Now, solidification time also we define the solidification V by A ratio uh, divided by square root of the alpha T s. This is the non dimensional parameter we have we have already discussed in the in the in the uh, previous class. Now, equation 1 can be replaced uh, can be replaced like that. So, equation 1 is this one that a volume by area ratio and volume by area ratio should be remains uh, uh, constant in case of the because solidification time is the same. So, equation 1 is indicates the volume by area uh, for the casting and uh, riser is the same in this case. Now, equation 1 can be replaced uh, by considering the effect of the this thing uh, uh, in this case. So, here volume by area. So, here beta equal to volume by area by uh, beta into square root of alpha T uh, s because here I can say like that uh, this equation can be uh, modified the square root of T s can be like that V by area by square root of alpha into beta. So, that square root of uh, this uh, T s here. So, the solidification time. So, therefore, in this case with the similar analogy we follow uh, the equation 1. So, equation 1 volume by area ratio for the cost and the riser will be the same. So, therefore, if we incorporate the effect of the beta, so here also in the both the cases solidification time will be the same. So, therefore, in case of the uh, in case of the riser, this can be V by A riser, B alpha riser, beta riser ok and similarly root 3 S in case of the casting it should be V by A casting square root of alpha C and the beta c. If we put it then this should be the same equal to that. So, riser and casting volume solidification time is the same with this analogy we can we can modify this equation. So, v by a riser so v r f by a r divided by square root of the alpha r into beta r then v c by a c the for casting beta c by alpha c. So, that should be equal. Now, combining equation 2 and 4. So, we have already estimated the equation 2 that V R F in terms of the other parameter V R F uh, V C and V R such that we replace the final volume of the riser in terms of the V C V R because initial volume of the riser. So, therefore, it is more easier to calculate V R V R F is replaced by other F into V C plus V R uh, from equation 2 we put it here and here we can do this uh, rearrangement of this different terminology. So, A R and S is here B R square root B star and this thing. So, therefore, we can do further rearrangement of this thing 1 minus M into B R and 
we make a common v r from here. So, 1 minus f minus f into v c equal to the we put in this other side beta square root of alpha beta c square root of alpha c into a r into v by area of the casting. So, into v by area of the casting. So, this is actually more general equation to take care of the by taking care of the uh, volumetric shrinkage uh, during the solidification process. So, if we solve this equation the different way we can get the what can be the the dimension or uh, specific dimension for the this casting uh, uh, for the riser. So, we can utilize this equation with an example also take an example say for example an aluminum plate casting 25 by 125 by 125 millimeter is fed with an end riser. So, end riser is the basically all uh, this is the riser and this is the actual cast volume. So, assuming that the this riser is basically all surface area is responsible for the heat transfer uh, the in case of the end riser and both entirely encast in the silica sand calculate the height and the diameter of the riser. So, basically we are interested to know what can be the dimension of the riser if we consider the sinkage volume during the casting process. Now, to solve this particular problem first we understand the what can be the solution uh, what can be the assumptions for this particular uh, problem. So, first we neglect the contact area between the uh, casting and the riser. So, contact area means we are although some there is a some con this contact area we can uh, we can neglect it. So, in so in the sense that all riser volume is response the surface area is responsible for the losing the heat. So, that is the purpose. So, edges and the corners of the plate will freeze more quickly than the plate as a whole. So, definitely edges and corner will be more thin, but we are assuming the uniformly uh, we are not considering the which part will be uh, solidify first which part will be the second and all these factors we are uh, neglecting in this case, but as a bulk we are considering the solidification of the riser and the casting process. But riser remains the molten enough so that it does not freeze before the entire casting. So, definitely so it should not freeze before the entire casting. So, at least we will be able to supply the molten metal upon the shrinkage happens into the cast volume. So, so, therefore, uh, assuming all these things we can start the solution of this thing. So, first we need to calculate volume by area ratio should be for an infinite plate because if you see we have the dimension 25 by 125 by 125 millimeter cube. So, as compared to the other two dimension the thickness is actually small 25. So, we can assume the infinite plate such that volume equal to say A, B, C and a surface area a surface area equal to 2 into a b plus b c plus c a. So, like that. So, volume by area ratio uh, equal to a b c by 2 into a b plus b c plus c a. In this case, uh, see other two dimensions very big as compared to the uh, uh, this thing uh, dimension we, uh, we, we can see. So, therefore, in this case we see that a b c twice into a b because uh, this dimension uh, other two dimensions very uh, uh, very uh, sm uh, very small in this case. So, uh, so in this case uh, a b is basically approximately it can be c by uh, c by 2 because this b c tends to 0 c a tends to 0. So, only 2 a b will be there then it becomes c by 2. So, volume by area is so there volume by area is basically height the thickness thickness of the this mold. So, h by 2 and this we can calculate this is the value. Now, we can the other parameters aluminum assuming the shrinkage of the aluminum is around because C, aluminum is having 6 percent shrinkage will be there during the solidification which is changing phase from liquid phase to solid phase. But adding fraction of the mold dilation will be there. So, some sort of the two adjustments with small dilation during the uh, solidification process we can take little more of the actual values of the aluminum shrinkage. So, we can assume that f equal to 0 0.075. So, little more than that of the 0 0.06. Now, cast volume we can calculate. So, in that case and we know the non-dimensional parameter lambda equal to uh, we can we already see that theta f minus theta 0 rho m l by rho c p that we can calculate this non dimensional parameter we can uh, if you uh, remember that 
during the uh, casting process that when you consider the curvature effect also in the casting solidification there we can see this kind of the non dimensional parameter. So, non theta f minus theta 0 rho m l dot rho c p. So, there we can calculate the lambda equal to uh, 1 minus uh, 1 point 1.26 this uh, this lambda can be calculated like that. So, once you calculated the values of the lambda then for an infinite plate uh, this the in this case w the factor equal to infinity. So, therefore, we can consider the beta value equal to twice lambda by twice uh, root pi because this beta value can be calculated like that. So, we are using basically this one here 1 by omega tends to infinity for the flat plate. So, 1 by omega tends to 0. So, this term will be 0. So, beta equal to lambda into twice by root pi. So, lambda we have already calculated this value with the other parameters and it is associated with the this L dot rho m this is associated with the molten metal and rho cp is associated with the uh, mold material. So, therefore, putting this all this value we can get this value. So, beta c is calculated 2 i uh, this 2 lambda by root pi. So, from here you can calculate 1 this is 1.42. So, this is the beta c for the cast volume for the but uh, for riser it is of the infinite dimension but for riser the beta value can be different because it is not having the flat surface. So, it is a cylindrical volume. So, omega value can be uh, in this case it can be 3 or 4 uh, between 3 between 3 or uh, between 3 or 4. So, in this case we are assuming the omega equal to 3.5 not exactly 3 because it is a infinite dimension that is why not exactly uh, the 3 we can consider the in between 3 and 4 that is 3.5 we can consider. So, beta r for the riser lambda equal to twice by root pi 1 by 3.5 into b. So, lambda already calculated. So, because it depends the already theta freezing temperature the initial temperature rho m l uh, rho c p value. So, lambda will be the same in this case, but even lambda will be the same it is can be the quadratic equation will be getting beta r in terms of the beta r. So, by solving the quadratic equation we take the uh, root positive root we will get the values of the beta r equal to 1.64. We can see the beta c cast volume the value of the 1.42, but in case of the riser the beta equal to 1.64. So, both the beta value we, have, we can consider here we can we can calculate, but remember this calculation we are taking care of the curvature effect associated with the casting process. Now, uh, we can see we, once we calculate beta c and beta r then alpha r thermal diffusivity in this case alpha r and alpha c will be the same because it is a uh, thermal diffusivity for the both the material are the same although riser and runner and riser they are encrusted in the silica sand also. So, both the liquid metal as well as the mold material are the same for the runner and riser. So, therefore, thermal diffusivity will be the same in this case. So, alpha r equal to alpha c for the similar material. So, now this terminology beta r square root of the alpha r by beta c square root of the alpha c equal to ratio of the beta r by beta c. So, 1.16 we can calculate. Now, we can get this equation what we have already uh, calculated the equation. So, here you can see this equation we bring this equation this more general equation the in terms of the the fraction f we can calculate this thing take this value 1 by f b r f b c and this ratio equal to 1.16 into area a r into v by a casting. Now, if we put the values of the f and of course, uh, cast volume we have already calculated because cast volume is calculation we can do oh, that is already defined. So, cast put the values of the V c, but we know V r is unknown here, f is also known. So, V r is there. So, here also V c you can put the value uh, here a r also we do not know, uh, but V um, by a area ratio for the casting also we know the V by a is V by a for casting it was h by 2 put this value. And, uh, and then we are getting the V r and A r in terms of this thing. Now, the this equation we are getting. Now, suppose the cylindrical riser volume equal to pi by 4 d square h d and h will be there and surface area we can see that 2 into pi by 4 d square into pi d h. Remember it is a uh, side cylinder. So, therefore, we are considering the all the sur sur cylindrical surface is responsible for the heat losing. So, here can be calculated 2 into pi by 4 d square pi d h. Now, h from here we can calculate h equal to in terms of the other 4 v r by pi d square. 
So, from here you can h can be calculated in terms of the volume and the diameter. Now, therefore, a r can be calculated like that uh, uh, pi by 2 d square uh, this term and pi d h we put the values of the h here. So, in terms of the volume, so therefore, here pi by 4 d square pi by 2 d square into 4, 4 v r by pi. So, this we are getting. Now, we can find out the dimension such that uh, a minimum uh, this thing the that heat losing will be the minimum from the surface of the uh, riser and therefore, and heat loss from the riser it depends on the, the surface area. So, that is why calculating the values of the minimum values of the surface area in this particular uh, designing of the riser. If you do that d a r by d d equal to 0 and you can get this expression uh, 4 b r by d square and uh, from here we can see that uh, sorry here this one term. Uh, it should be pi into d and d square. So, it should be pi into d I think here and we can do that. Uh, so, uh, sorry, it should not be pi, it is actually d uh, pi pi balance and uh, 4 v r 1 d will be there instead of the pi it should be d. So, then the derivative do the derivative for this de first derivative we can find this expression and then from there we can d q equal to 4 v r by pi and 4 v r we can use the values of the pi by 4 d square h finally, we are getting d equal to h. So, for the minimization of the uh, to minimum the heat transfer rate of the heat transfer uh, on the riser where the diameter should be equal to the height in case of the side cylindrical riser. So, uh, this is side cylindrical, but similar exercise can also be performed in case of the top riser, but top riser there is the uh, there is the three surface on the in case of the top riser. Uh, cylindrical riser this this surface will be the responsible for the heat transfer, but this is in contact with the cast volume. So, we need to consider the surface area only these three surfaces. So, this is the so therefore, in this case the pi d h plus pi by 4 d square. So, instead of the 2 into pi by 4 d square the surface area will be different in this case top riser and we can perform the similar exercise and find out the to minimization of the surface area we can find out the different expression relation between the d and h. Now, in this particular case when d equal to h then we can see that d equal to h so volume equal to pi by 4 d cube and a r equal to d. So, we can go back to the equation the v r. So, volume and the surface area put assuming the h equal to d in this case. Then from there we can solve the equation we can find out the d value in this case d value equal to h equal to 98.2. Uh, millimeter. So, this is the minimum diameter and the height will be the same and that is equal to the 98.2 millimeter uh, in this particular case. So, this is an, just an example that what we can design the riser assuming the, the minimum heat loss from the surface of the riser and in that cases if you want to track the minimum heat loss then we need to find out the what is the minimum surface area. We can perform this optimization exercise and from there we can find out the relation between the d and h for the cylindrical riser and the uh, in, in this the from top cylindrical riser and side cylindrical riser the exercise will be the uh, different in this in these two cases. And of course, uh, there is another point is also there the what can be the minimum diameter of the riser which is in this case we are assuming the infinitely tall. So, that also can also be calculated uh, in the using this particular uh, expression. Now, if we assume the when the infinitely tall if h is tends to infinity. So, fraction of the volume f the feeding material uh, from the casting f a v c would also tends to 0 if h tends to infinity that means, it is infinitely long cylinder. If this is the case, we can go back to this the volume by area ratio uh, for the in this case will be the uh, assuming the um, uh, d by uh, in, uh, that ratio here the volume by area ratio we can calculate pi by pi by d square pi d h and divided by h here divided by h this one and divided by h so pi d. So, limiting v r by a r if h tends to infinity then it becomes d by 4. So, volume therefore, the limiting value of the diameter can also be like that assuming that v by v r by a r equal to the d by uh, 4. So, if you put the v by a cast uh, in this case the riser volume. So, v by a the a ratio equal to we can calculate. So, you can see the v uh, a v c v by a c v by a c we can know, can know and uh, in this case v r into, into because f b c tends to 0 here 
and this uh, we already calculated V by A uh, this equal to. So, in this case we can calculate A R equal to uh, in terms of the V R, A R equal to 0 0.925 into V R and this is the uh, into A R. So, therefore, V R by A R ratio we can see uh, some value it means that V by A R ratio equal to D by 4, D minimum by 4 equal to C. So, D minimum equal to 62.7. So, when you are taking the infinitely long cylinder, so diameter should be at least uh, minimum diameter should be 62.7, but optimum diameter can be 98 point uh, something uh, 98 point 98 point 2 millimeter. So, this way we can analyze this thing, we can find the optimum value meter at the same time for infinitely long cylinder we can estimate also what is the limiting the minimum values of the diameter using the same exercise a similar kind of the, uh, the similar expression we, we can utilize it and to estimate the what is the minimum values of the diameter associated in the uh, of, uh, of the top cylindrical riser uh, sorry uh, side cylindrical riser. I think that is all uh, for the timing because we have discussed in this particular module uh, that uh, that uh, riser perspective of the riser design what we can estimate the, 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 the design the riser just looking into the shrinkage volume during the solidification process and uh, this will help to estimate the, the, the proper designing of the riser and more realistic way because uh, uh, whatever other calculation we have done that is the we are not considering the sinkage volume in this uh, particular case, but of course uh, the it will help the considering the sinkage volume will help to further uh, enhancement the estimation more precise estimation of the design of the riser or even uh, in the in this approach we consider that also uh, calculate the solidification time also because in that case we can do the so many time steps that different temperature range this also en enhance the more precise um, the calculate uh, calculation efficiency or precise calculation for the solidification time in case of the pure metal. I think that is all for the time being. Mm -hmm.